Good morning. Uh, my name is Robert Klein. I'm chairman of the governing board of California Institute of Regenerative Medicine. And it is our privilege this morning to have a distinguished group of speakers on ALS. This is a uh, disease that has extraordinary impact on each individual life and family's life that it touches. Approximately 5,600 people every year are diagnosed with ALS. It has a disproportionate impact on military families, people who have served in the military uh, for some reason <clears throat> finding their lives uh, inflicted with this terrible disease at a much higher rate than the rest of the population. Every life is important and certainly we are dedicated for people globally in advancing stem cell research to address this disease and in doing so we will also help those who have served our country. The life expectancy of ALS patients averages from two to five years but there are those that have a much longer effective life, some <coughs> living for 20 years and every one of those individuals has a chance to be a great advocate for the future. We will hear one of those great advocates today, a patient uh, who is eloquent in the description of the disease and the fight to advance medicine. But we're going to lead off the program <coughs> with Dr. Larry Goldstein. And if you're, you're facing a terrible disease, you want nature on your side. And I commonly uh, describe Larry Goldstein as a force of nature. This force of nature is driving uh, UC San Diego's School of Medicine's uh, stem cell program. Uh, we have uh, the benefit <coughs> of Katrina Jameson, a young physician scientist, part of that program who has completed a phase one human trial for polycythemia vera with our funding and has launched into a trial for <coughs> chronic myeloid leukemia. It's been an extraordinarily productive program. And if anyone can break the Byzantine puzzle of scientific uh, obstacles that lie in the, in the path of solving ALS, having Dr. Goldstein at the head of this program is an immeasurably valuable asset. While at Harvard, he was the Loeb Chair in Natural Sciences. He was elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Uh, he recently received the Public Service Award from the American Society for Stem Cell Biology. Uh, he was a member of my scientific advisory committee when I wrote Proposition 71. And I can tell you, as you all know, but the public watching this video may not realize, <coughs> he was one of the great advocates in the state of California for Proposition 71, the California Stem Cell Research and Cures Initiative that established this agency to fund uh, medical research. His laboratory has discovered important links between transport processes and Alzheimer's and Huntington's diseases. Uh, it is an extraordinary privilege uh, to have Dr. Larry Goldstein here who will introduce the entire uh, speaking panel this morning. Dr. Goldstein. Good morning. Can you hear me all right? Good. So, thank you, Chairman Klein. Thank you, President Trounsen, members of the board. Thank you for inviting us to talk about our project today and tell you a little bit about ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And in particular, what I want to tell you and introduce to you is our team, what we're trying to do, and then tell you why we think we can actually succeed. So. Um, 
the plan, uh, in a nutshell, is here. I will give you the uh, introduction to ALS, our team, and what we're trying to do. My colleague, Dr. Don Cleveland, will then tell you about many of his discoveries over the past years that have led to the scientific rationale for the approach we're taking for Lou Gehrig's disease. My colleague, Mark Bonahati from industry, an important part of our interdisciplinary team, will tell you about how we're making the cells that we're trying to use as an intervention for ALS. My colleague, Dr. Martin Marsala, will then tell you what our preclinical approach is in animal models so that we can get to the stage of clinical trials in humans. And then my colleague, Dr. Lucy Brun from the ALS Association, will explain to you where does our approach fit into the context of the overall approaches to ALS uh, development and treatment. Mr. Dan Desmond here will offer you what it's like uh, from the trenches, if you will, to actually uh, have to cope with this disease and its ravages, and then I'll give you a brief wrap-up. Now, that seems like a long list, I know, but it will be snappy, you can be sure. <laughs> 